Hey, listen to this. I'm about to break new ground with this question. Why is this Nintendo product so expensive? Over the years, especially in the Nintendo Switch era, a lot of Nintendo products price points have been questioned. I mean, we're talking pretty much anything Nintendo's offering from games to Amiibo to consoles. I mean, take for example, Nintendo Special Edition Nintendo Switch OLEDs, uh, something like the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Special Edition and the Splatoon 3 Special Edition. $10 more expensive, no idea why. I mean, they don't include anything extra. If anything, consoles that uh, actually include things like the Mario Choose Choose a Game bundle, uh, that includes extra stuff. You get like a brand new game with that, plus you get stickers included in that bundle. Whereas with Tears of the Kingdom Special Edition, I mean, that's just, that's just a dumbass little Zelda design going on there. It looks nice, and there's for sure a bit more work that goes into something like that compared to a white Nintendo Switch OLED, but still, I mean, like, $10 more expensive. I've just... That, that's a bit new to me. Then you have games, stuff like Skyward Sword HD for $60. That, alongside a lot of their remakes and ports at that price, you know, it's like, oh, man, you're really... You're really pushing things here. But, man, when the Switch launched, uh, the accessories, the lineup of accessories... Uh, these things were pretty damn pricey. The Nintendo Switch Pro Controller retailed and still retails for $70. Now that thing, at the very least, is incredibly high quality. I love the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. It's one of the best controllers out there. But is it worth $70? I mean, like... In terms of the amount of time I've gone out of it, yeah. But still, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller was more expensive than, like, the DualShock 4 for the PS4 or the Xbox One controller. Specifically with the DualShock 4, I think that's, like, an apt comparison because that also has motion control, that has that d d dumbass light, <laughs> you have the touchpad on it, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Uh, and it just kind of feels like controllers are going up in price significantly. Uh, especially look at the Joy-Con, a pair of those, $80? Absolutely nutso. But uh, things start to get uh, slightly better once you kind of consider the fact that, hey, the Nintendo Switch does technically come with two controllers right out of the box. You detach those two Joy-Con and there you have two controllers to play a Mario game or any other kind of simple co-op or two-player uh, competitive multiplayer game right then and there. So that's something. So $80 for two Joy-Con, I mean, like... <laughs> I mean, technically, kind of two controllers there, so that's like 40 bucks a pop. Eh, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I mean, people are buying them. I'm buying them. I'm buying these things all the time. So, like, who am I to complain about a price point that I have paid multiple times? But here's something that I didn't buy for the longest time, and I finally bit the bullet on. That is a separate Nintendo Switch dock. Now, why did I never bite the bullet on this before? Because, you know, this is a great idea. You know, the Switch is such a unique console where, you know, very easily you can bring it from one TV to another in your house. You don't need to have multiple Nintendo Switches if you want to have, you know, one going on, like, the living room TV and one going in the bedroom or one going in the basement, whatever. You can just get multiple docks and then you can just bring your Switch from one place to another. Another. You don't have to unhook everything and bring it places and whatnot. This is an amazing 90 fucking dollars. Yeah, this was wild to me. $90 for this, the Nintendo Switch dock set. Now, I picked this up on Amazon and uh, yeah, <laughs> I got the Japanese model and uh, it's a little, it's it's in slightly rough shape, but you know, it's whatever. I, I, I got this for the utility of it, not for the collectability of the dock set box. And as we can see, you know, we move over here and Nintendo's advertising, hey, you know, you can play it here and then bring it over to your bedroom with your cat and play it there. You can just bring your Switch from one dock to another. It is taking advantage of this system's form factor to the umpteenth degree, and I love it. I mean, this is something that other companies, specifically Sony, uh, is really trying to, like, do, but in their own stupid-ass way. I remember the PlayStation TV, the little box that was uh, mainly just a PS Vita 
without anything that made it a PS Vita. And since playing Vita games wasn't really selling the thing, and also with the Vita, Sony kind of advertised it as like a PS4 remote play device, where instead of having to get two PS4s or uh, unplug your PS4 and bring it into another room, you can keep your PS4 in one room and then uh, go to your other room, get the PS TV, and uh, just connect it to your Wi-Fi, and then you can stream your PS4 to another TV in the house. And Sony more recently is doing that with the PlayStation Portal. I, I, who the hell is doing this, man? It's like, these are like good on like a baseline, but then there's like a million asterisks down below where it's like, okay, wouldn't it be great to play your console that's already plugged into one TV on another without having to unplug things or buy another console? You also have to be running it through Wi-Fi and have fast enough Wi-Fi to stream things. And also it's gonna be over streaming. So there's gonna be input lag and delay. And I'm just looking at this like, uh, why would I want this? This is horrible. Horrible. And Sony's like pushing for this hard. I mean, they made that whole ass PlayStation Portal device just for this feature. I mean, that's the entire point of that thing. There's nothing else it can do. Nothing else in the world. And Nintendo has the ability to do something like this right here. It's so easy. And they don't give a f They don't care. I mean, if you want it, that's what they're advertising over here. But at the same time, it's like... I can't find these in stores anymore. This is a very niche product at this point. Probably why Amazon sent me the Japanese version. But, you know, to be fair, it doesn't really matter. I mean, like, it's the exact same dock, exact same connections and setups. But it is wild to me that this is $90, a third of the Switch's price. And it all adds up, you know, like the Nintendo Switch is $390 off and you're roughly talking a Nintendo Switch Lite. So I'll give Nintendo that. Their price points are roughly matching up here. But I just think it's insane because the Switch dock is easily like the cheapest feeling element of the Nintendo Switch system. So let me take a look at what a singular dock by itself is all about. Cracking this open, there she is. Now, oh, wow, what a surprise. So what I'm talking about here is the Switch dock really doesn't have much going on here at all. Uh, Nintendo has pretty much made it so then you can't just connect like an HDMI cable to the Switch directly. It has to go in the Switch dock. Does the Switch dock do anything? No, it's basically just a fancy HDMI USB-C hub. And it uses a uh, very specific USB-C cable, uh, meaning, you know, like it, it's like you can't just plug in any ordinary USB-C to HDMI cable. No, nah, it has to be this one. Now, I know that there are some third-party docks out there, but I remember in the early days of the Nintendo Switch, a lot of those third-party docks uh, potentially messed with the system. Uh, now, uh, I, I'm sure these days, uh, people have figured that out, and there are much better third-party docks, but I don't really care <laughs> about that, to be honest. I'll just, I'll just get this one, and I'll just waste money. But yeah, pretty much all this is, is just a very fancy USB-C HDMI hub. I always thought it'd be pretty cool if the Switch dock had, like, a spring mechanism. <laughs> I don't think it would work well, but I mean to be fair I think that would be kind of cool because then it would lock it in because there are some times where uh, You know, I'm trying to change the game card on the switch when it's in the dock and uh, just trying to you know un Unhook the little game flap and uh, while it's in the dock There's a chance it's gonna wobble and it's gonna you know get out of the out of TV mode You know like what if it springs down almost like a like a like that! So now, the dock is boring. It's a dock. It connects to the TV. That's it. To be fair, there's the dock included in the Nintendo Switch OLED, which has an Ethernet cable. Anybody else find that weird? <laughs> or it's just like, I, I, I would have taken like extra USB ports over an Ethernet cable. I, I just kind of feel like, I don't know. I don't care enough about, you know, online multiplayer to really warrant plugging an Ethernet cable into my, into my game console. So I'm not really the target demographic for that. Uh, but I just found it weird that they included that uh, in the system that's that's literally like e everything that they did to that system redesign wise was all about like the screen and just like the the actual handheld. Uh, and then they were like, you know what? Screw it. Let's let's add an Ethernet cable to the dock. Why? But even with that extra port, that's no excuse for this to be 90 damn dollars. I just I, I never understood that. 
It's a third of the Switch's price. Everything about this dock just feels like fairly cheap hollow. There's nothing special to it. Well, I think what you get more value out of with this purchase is the uh, HDMI cable and the USB-C uh, AC adapter. Well, now this might be worth $20. Yeah, so I just wanted to talk about how weird I find that this is so expensive. Maybe there's some weird, funky marketing manipulation going here. Uh, because, you know, I, I would have assumed if they priced this at like $50 or something around there, like a lot more people would be buying these because it's just like, hey, it would be nice to play your Switch on another TV by just taking it from one dock and putting it uh, in another. Uh, but maybe Nintendo would prefer people just flat out buying a new Switch instead. So they might just make this so expensive we're like, no, I don't, I, I don't want to buy this. I'll just wait and get a special edition Nintendo Switch system. That's stupid logic. It's stupid. I don't, I, okay, I, I'll just admit, I don't know why Nintendo <laughs> is pricing this so high. It can't be worth $90 to make. This can't be $90 to make. You know what I would understand being $90 if it would be like a Nintendo Switch Lite dock because then you're, you know, you buy the Nintendo Switch Lite for 200 bucks and then, you know, like a hundred dollars more or something, you can get a dock and then you can pretty much use that as a standard Nintendo Switch. They would never do that. That, that's, that's, that's too logical. So yes, uh, I am pretty happy that I finally bit the bullet and spent $90 on an accessory to play my Switch on another TV. Uh, yay me. Join me next time where I will just straight up throw my wallet in a lake.